Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. <laughs> What's that you say? Is that a chain and two sprockets and does it work? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> All right, enough of that. We're going big dick on Inventor today. We're doing a chain and we're doing sprockets and we're going to do it right because your boy does it right and we do it right around here. So we've seen other tutorials. I mean, I've done it myself. I've Googled around. I've looked at other tutorials out there that show how to model. To be fair, I haven't looked at them all. So if there's someone else that's done this, I do apologize. But this is all my work. But I've seen other tutorials that do chains, right? But they only move in Inventor Studio. And that's like, all right, fair enough. But oh, we do it right around here. We want to mimic some real life shit. And we're going to do that. We're going to do that right here. And you might be thinking, no, it can't be done. It can't be done. You cannot get a chain to go around there and then down here and then around there. It just can't be done. It can't be done, sir. Oh, really? Oh, really? Is that right? Is that a fact? Is that a true story? Well, sit back and behold and be blown away in the turbulence of its magnificence. Look at that. You. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Right, let's go the other way. Let's go the other way. It, does, it works on one. Oh, but does it work on the big dick? Does it work on the big one? Let's have a look. Oh, oh, oh look at that. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And you might be thinking, well, you must have constraints driving, constraints driving, constraints driving, parameters driving, an export of a, a spreadsheet linked to a parameter, linked to an iProperty, driving the constraint, blah, blah, blah. No. No, I don't. No, this is legit. This is legit motion and legit movement. So what I'm going to do now, just to prove this, is we're going to do a half section and we're going to cut through the middle. So a slicage through the middle plane. So we're going exactly bang on through the sprockets and through the chain, as you can see. And then we're going to look side on so we can see, right, that's that outer diameter there. That is the outer extent of the chain link where it makes contact with teeth. And what we're going to do is we're going to witness the internal magnificence and watch this. Oh, look at it making contact. Look at it turning the cog. Oh, it's so good. That is so deliciously satisfying. I can't even explain. It is so good. And then it breaks, obviously. Obviously, it's going to break. It should flick out of it any second. Go on, you can flick out of it. Go on, go on, there you go. There we go. And then as it exits, as it exits, let's do it slowly. Let's do it slowly. When you can do it. There you go. Oh, it's so good. It is so satisfying. All right. All right. Enough of, enough of the madness. Let's come out with the section view. So I'm going to show you how to do this. And what I would say, though, what I would say beforehand is... Oh, look at that. Didn't even know it did that. Woo! Yeah. Right. What I'll say beforehand is ask yourself the question, right? If you, I mean, there are people watching this that need to model a chain. So I've been asked it many times in the videos that I've done already. And you've probably come across this because you want to model a chain. You probably sat there thinking, come on, get on with it, man. Get on with it. I want to see how you did it. I, I know. Sorry, patience. You know, it is a tutorial. Ask yourself this question. Do you absolutely need to do this? Because it's not easy, for one. And for secondly, there's many ways of doing it. Each method that you do that mimics a real-life chain movement is going to be a pain in the ass. It doesn't work perfectly. Inventor's not designed to handle this sort of complicated movement. It's not, it, it really isn't. Your models are meant to be fully constrained. Yeah, you can have a bit of movement here and there, but a slidage going on, a bit of, you know, a bit of friction here and there. But it's not meant to, you, you know, it's not an animation package. It's not meant to do this sort of thing. When you have movement like this, you have so many constraints interacting with each other so many calculations going on as you're pulling and dragging you've got mate constraints between axes checking to see if they're still able to solve you've got face-to-face -face constraints you've got surface constraints you've got then you've got the, the thing hitting the cog and then you've got it calculating that and then as it's doing that it's pushing some it's pushing the cog around trying to solve its constraints and then it's seeing if the clash works and there's so much going on that it gets to a point where it just stops It'll just stop, even though, right, for example, this chain physically can and should move all the way around this cog. It just stops, you know. It, I can, if I do it really slowly, it might work, but then it might just jump back for no apparent reason whatsoever. And then I'll stop, and I can grab it from the other end, and then push it. And it'll go a little bit further, 
it'll go a bit further and then it'll just then the some of the constraints start flipping around as it's just done it's just flipped a chain link over on top of itself for no good reason whatsoever and then i can grab it now it's just stopped you know you can see it's moving a little bit and then yeah, I'll grab this one and I'll push it around. It'll move a bit further and then another chain link flips and, you know, eventually it'll go around. It can move around, but it just stops. You know, it's crackers. It's absolutely crackers. It's not, it's not designed to work like this and you'll find that you'll just struggle. You'll struggle in a big way. So, yes, this chain can move all the way around, but, you know, we're only working with like seven or eight chain links here. If you modeled the entire chain, which... Yeah, that, that's easy enough to do. If you were to then try and pull it around, you're going to be in for a really bad time. My PC as well isn't a cabbage. It's it's a really strong, it's a core, it's an i7-4790K CPU, which is a really, it's not it's not Broadwell. It's not, you know, the, the, the latest gen, but it's just as powerful as the latest gen. Um, and it's struggling to handle all the computations because it's just it's not meant to do this. It, it's cool as balls that you can do it, but it's not meant to do it. So... What I'm going to do is show you how to model up the links, how to put them together, and then how to get the cogs in place. Because, obviously, in order for the chain links to be able to, to link with the teeth and be an absolutely perfect fit, there's a, there's a process and a method to that, so we need to, we need to look at that as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to model our chain links based on this standard here. Now, you can get the, the web link from here. And these are the dimensions that I use to model up the chain links. So I'm going to go through that from scratch. It's going to be a bit boring. It's going to be a bit laborious, but it is a tutorial and it's intended for you to follow. So what we're going to do is we're going to shut this down. Let's save it just for reference purposes to save that. And let's start up a new IPT. Right, so we're going to start by modeling up the first chain link. And we're going to, are we going to do it best practice? I think we probably should. I think we probably should. I haven't, I haven't actually, uh, I haven't practiced this. I've done obviously I've done it once before as I was experimenting. It's taken me a long time to get to a point where I'll where I'm able to finally present it. I'm happy enough to say, right, it I can do this, it works. But I haven't rehearsed it at all. So um I'm still wondering where to start with best practice and how to right. Okay, well let, let's start with the first. So let's model this internal chain link here. All right, so we'll start with this one. So what we need to do is find out what the internal dimension is from face to face. So that's B1. So B1 is... That's 3 mil, right? So what we need to do is start by getting this down, 3 mil. So let's create a work plane and let's... Let us... Let us... Let us offset it by minus 1.5, which means that when we sketch... The, the, the whole point of that is when we sketch this internal face, it's going to... It's going to retain the XY plane is the center line of the part because we're starting our sketch 1.5 mil away from that. So that's that's a good place to start. So let's do a sketch on here and let us, let us, let us, let, let us just get the, 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 the approximate, let's get the approximate shape down, right? So we'll, we'll do that, we'll do that and then we'll get an arc from here to here like that and like from there to there like that, right? There's the approximate shape of the chain link, right? That's that, that's how you sketch it in Vendor. It is. You, you don't draw it absolutely precise like you would do in AutoCAD straight from the go. You just do it you just do it approximate. And then you can say, right, well, you know, this circle here, this one here is it can move up and down and change sizes. So it's all over the shop. So what we need to do is say, right, well, you need to be horizontally aligned to you. And then you need to be horizontally aligned to that. And then that lines it up. All right. And then what we can do, I suppose, is to stop these circles from being you know, not equidistance from the center, we can say, let us draw a construction line between that and that, right? And then let's put a point on the middle so there should be a green dot there, right? So that, that point there represents the exact center distance between the two circles. So what we can then do is put a const uh, constraint, a coincident constraint from there to there, right? And that makes sure that these two circles are always going to be exact same distance away once we get some dimensions down anyway. All right, so now we need to do some sizes, right? We need some sizes. And ah, here we go, H2, right? So that's the diameter of the outer circles. H2, so that's 7.1 mil. So we can go dimension 7.1, right? And then we can come onto this one here and then 
we can just link that to that so that one's going to be 7.1 as well and then i think i think what's that beeping can you hear that beeping apologies if you can hear the beeping that's extremely annoying right so what we need to do is then make these some tangents here so we can tangent from there to there and then we can tangent from there to there and then from there to there and from there to there all right so that gives us a bit more of a chain link profile all right and then we need the centers and the centers is going to be p to p uh, p p is eight mil all right eight mil so we can go uh dimension so i guess they do that's that then eight mil there you go all right and then this here well i don't think i've got the size for this one so i think what i did is i just made that 7.1 as well i think i think that's what i did yeah that'll do yeah 7.1 then link that to there uh, in fact what i should have done was just said that's going to be the same as that all right that's that and then that's it done that's that's the that's that's the sort of overall side profile for the the chain link and uh, i'm thinking best pro uh, i'll tell you what it doesn't matter let's just we've, we need to put a pinhole a hole for the pin for the other chain link to go through the middle here which is i was thinking we well, should we do that in another sketch but it's not important it's not really important and that i think it's d2 isn't it d2 is the diameter of the pin pin diameter 2.31 i mean you could leave you could leave room for tolerances and whatnot but nah nah it is just a graphical representation we're not that's the thing we're not chain designers right we're not designing the chain itself right we're not going to manufacture the links we're just this is just visual representation of a chain which is why it's not really that important that it moves properly because we, we're not going to actually have it physically fabricated so we're going to go 2.31 bollocks i still got construction line switched on turn that off right and then circle from there to there and then link that to there so yeah it's another kind of best practice kind of thing is always link your dimensions together if you can so if that circle is always going to be the same size as that circle which it is then just link the two parameters because if 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 at any point you do think well actually 7.1 was wrong it's going to be eight then everything updates. So you don't have to go and change like five or six dimensions later on. You can just do it once and then everything else updates. Um, as well, as well, you see that line there? I, I manually drew this arc down here when most people would have mirrored that down to there over that as a center line. Don't do that. If you if you mirror anything in sketches, you struggle to use that line as a, as a profile. So when it comes to extruding this into a solid, the extrude command sometimes struggles to pick up lines and other sketch entities that have been like offset and mirrored and scaled and copied and stuff so just just draw stuff if you if you if you can if if you can avoid mirroring it the only time you'd re i'd really suggest using the likes of mirror is if you need to mirror you know you import a sketch profile from another program and it comes in as this huge clusterfuck of absolute madness and then you you know you, you kind of draw it all again it's just not feasible then you can mirror stuff but not in this case, we'll just draw it again. Right, so that's that. And then the thickness of this side profile is T. And T equals 0 0.8. Right, so what we're going to do is extrude that, that, and that. And we're going to go that way because the center line's about here. So we're going that way by 0 0.8. Okay, right, and that work plane's done with, I think, so we can turn him off. Right, so that's that side of the chain link done. I think we can now just mirror this over to the other side, and it's three mil, isn't it? It's B1. Yeah, all right, so what we can do is we can go mirror. It's all right, do a 3D mirror. Mirror that extrusion, and then the mirror plane is going to be that. So that's why I used... That's why I created this sketch 1.5 mil off from the center, so I could use this as the center line for this mirror. And there we go. There we go. So we should have, if just just for clarity, uh, if we go a distance from there to there, that should be three mil. Yeah, good, good, yeah. Right, and then we can go and in back into here, and then we need to draw this sort of body here. Uh, I don't know what the name of it is. Sue me. And it is. It's that is D1. D1 is five mil. Right, no problem. Not a bloody problem. So we can come into here and we can go 2D sketch, sketch on that. Should we sketch on that? Is that best practice? Uh, no, no. I think what we'll do, 
I think what we'll do is we'll sketch on the middle. I'm thinking, I'm just thinking out loud. I don't think it really matters actually project uh, that onto there. That's to get the center point, All right? And then we can just say draw a circle from here to here and then make that five mil. It is five mil, it wasn't five point something, was it? Five mil, yeah. Right, five mil, finish that. All right, and then we're gonna extrude that and that, and then we're gonna go both ways, and then we're gonna go to the next face. And then that should, ooh, rut roll, rut roll. Right, okay, I think we don't wanna extrude the, the inner profile, do we? So we go that way to next. Uh, all right, we can't go to next both ways, can we? Oh, we can make him do between there and there. There we go. That'll do. There we go. Boom. Have that. Right. So that's that one done. And because everything is symmetrical, right, we did the first sketch. We did it best practice because your boy does things best practice when he can. We've got that as a center line, right? That's the exact center line of the link. And then we've got that as a center line, right, there. And then that as a center line. That's how you do it, right? Go watch my video about best practice starting a model, and that is exactly why. That's why we do it. So now that we've got a center line, we can take this feature here. We can mirror that, mirror plane that. Boom. Have some of that. Look at that. Swag Billy in the house. You. All right. I think that's it done. I think that's that chaining done. Right. Let's save this before it crashes and we lose all our work. Right. There's the existing parts that I've used. So. Uh, that I did for the, the demo part at the start. So what I'll do is I'll say call this TFI uh, demo chain. All right, and we'll save it in there. So we'll call this uh, demo link. I'm sorry, it's like these, this is a mechanical keyboard and it's probably extremely loud, but it's very satisfying to type on. Right, it's a cast iron chain, I believe. Could be wrong. So we're gonna change the material to cast iron. Uh, save that. Right. I suppose what we could also do is put some fillets on it just to make it look a little bit more realistic. You don't have to, but fill it. Let's just, uh, let's change the radius to 0 0.1 because this is a very small model and we'll we'll fill it dot, 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 that, and that, and that. That should do, shouldn't it? Okay, that's looking pretty mint. There we are. Right, save him again because uh, we like to overdo that. And what we need to do now is we need to model the second link, which is this larger link here, which sort of couples the, the smaller links together. And this is where this is where we go big dick again. This is where we start to... And this is... I'm going to do something which I haven't covered on the channel yet, which is um, another way of starting a model. So we're going to do a new part. And you're going to have to bear with this here. I'm going to explain why we're doing this in a second, right? You're going to go to Manage, then we're going to select Derive, and then we're going to select the link we've just modeled, demo link, and we're going to drop it into the model. And we're going to, are we going to keep everything in parameters? Uh, we don't need any of them, do we really? Nah. Come, all right, we're going to bring it in as a serve, as a work surface. And, and then, yeah, that'll do. Okay. Bring that in. Right. So the whole point of this, right, the whole point of bringing this, um, this model in through as a drive part is the second chain link, right? The larger chain link is it's flush. It's well, it, essentially its size is based on the smaller chain link, right? It's its face is sort of flush to the outer face of this one here. So rather than start a new part file and just model this sort of blindly, what we can do is we can model this one around this one because we know exactly where the the, the plate needs to be, it needs to be on the outer face of the smaller chain link. So what we're gonna do is we can say, right, let's start a sketch on here. And then we can project through. Uh, uh, maybe it wasn't a good idea to fill it yet. We're gonna use these edges here as the profile for the outer one. And then we can project through. Should we project through that one there or that one there? I think it's that one there. Right, that one there, and then that one there. That one there. Finish sketch. Right, so yeah, the whole point of that is just, uh, can we turn him off? Yes, we can. And that has allowed us to project through the sketch from the first link that we created. So we don't have to sketch it all out again. We don't have to put the dimensions all out again. This 
the side profile for this chain link is now adaptively and parametrically linked to the first chain link. So if I do go back and change the size of the first chain link, we've used those edges to build this chain link. So everything's linked together. Hopefully that makes sense. There's kind of not really any other way I can sort of simplify that down, but that should hopefully make sense. Let's um, turn him back on for now. And then what we can do is extrude this through and then it's still gonna be 0 0.8, 0 0.8 thickness, okay. And then we can mirror. And you might be thinking, but this chain link's meant, you know, that circle there is meant to be there because they're linked together. But it doesn't matter. It, it honestly doesn't matter because when we use this chain link in the actual chain itself, when we build the chain links together, you won't see this part here because we brought it through as a surface. So this bit here is here purely just to build this side plate. And then we can mirror that. And then we can, for a mirror plane, we can use the center line again because with the dog's nut we did it properly so we can mirror that around there oh it's so good isn't it isn't it so good right i think i think we can turn this one off now we don't need him anymore and then the final thing we need is the pin that goes through the the link which is it's just an extruded it's just an extrusion isn't it really so we've got d2 it was oh, actually what we need is the length of it so l that's the length of the pin and that's 8.2 Right, this is where we will use the middle plane. So what we'll do is we'll go sketch uh, there, hit F7 just to slice through so we don't get the other side of the chain link in the way. And then we'll project that onto there. And then, yeah, we'll just do one at a time. And then we'll just use that actually, that's all we need. And then what we can do is extrude him both ways by, Jesus Christ, I forgot it already, 8.2, 8.2. Point two. There we go. Look at that. Boom. And then we can mirror that around that. So this is this is following best practice. Now what a lot of people would have done, and this is kind of waffling, I know, but when I created this sketch for the pin, most people would have created two circles and done the two pins with one sketch. It's not that isn't best practice. Although in a very simple case like this, it doesn't make that much of a difference. It's just best practice to, I know I'm saying that word a lot, but it's, it is it is best practice to keep your sketches as simple as possible. And the rule is a sketch per feature. That is one feature and that is a second feature. It is, it's a separate bit of geometry, it's a separate feature. So you would have a sketch for this one. And then if you needed to, you could have had a sketch for that one. But in fact, we could, we, we could get the same job with a mirror. So if you can create something using a pattern or a mirror, do that instead of having loads of sketch objects. Sketch entities are harder to manage than 3D features because you can just go, oh, edit that feature as opposed to, right, which bloody, because when your model's massive, oh, which sketch was that bloody thing in? And then you go into your sketch and if you've got a massive clustered, clusterfuck of sketches with lots of stuff in it, it's hard to find what you need to edit. Anyway, I'm rambling again. Right, so now we can just put some fillets on and we're nearly done. So we're gonna come back in here, 0 0.1, and then we can uh, fillet that, 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 and that. Now let's put a fillet on him, 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 and him. And I think we're done. You could put a fillet there, I guess, if you wanted to. I'm not gonna, there we go. And then we're gonna make this one cast iron as well. And then we're swag Billy again. Where's iron cast? There we go. Yeah, that is looking absolutely mint. Right, save it. So now this is gonna be demo, uh, oh, sorry dog, it's demo link two. You can call it what you want. You can call it outer, outer link, you can call it whatever you want, really. There we go. So there's our, there's our second link, and then demo chain, there's our first link. So we've now got them both modeled. Okay, okay, what next? Right, let's just again save him before we do anything else. Right, what we're going to do is we're going to start a new assembly and we need to we need to get the sprockets, right? So we need to get those uh, those models with the teeth on them. And this is this is where we do a little bit of trickery. And I know I'm doing this from an, an empty template and your chances are you've probably got something already with existing model and geometry in it. I know, I know. You can sort of do the same process and once you've got the sprockets you can then move them and put them into another assembly. You'll see what I mean in a bit. So we're gonna start a new assembly, then we're gonna to go to the design tab, right? These are the these are the design accelerators. So there's tons of them here. I've got a couple of videos on some of these, like the bolt connection and frame generator and stuff like that. 
but we're going to use the power transmission so we're going to select the little drop down arrow here and we're going to go to roller chains and it's going to ask you to save your assembly so we're just going to call this i don't know test and this this is where you start getting your hopes up <laughs> you do when you start messing around with inventor you start getting your hopes up at this point oh chains chains <laughs> yes and then it completely throws you a cock in the ass <laughs> you're like oh man so for the chains the chain standard that we've used is this one here. It's the ISO 606 2004 Short Pitch Transmission Precision Roller Chains EU. And it's this one here, 05B-1, which corresponds to this one here, 05B-1 on the ISO standard. And that's the one we've used. So we're going to select this. And then what we need to do is we need to sort of pre-build a chain set. So we're going to select this little red arrow here. And this tells Inventor where the center line of the chain set is going to be. So it actually doesn't matter in this case because we're not really going to stick with it. But we can say drop it on the YZ. And then once you do that, just zoom out a bit. And you'll see it's for some reason, I don't know why, it sticks the, the actual preview of it sort of off screen. But that's what it's going to give you. There's a preview. So you're going to get two sprockets and then a chain set. And this is where you can kind of almost pre-tell it if that's not even a word but you can you can there's your, there's a preview of your teeth and each one of these is a preview of the chain links and you can tell it how big you want the sprockets to be you can grab the little arrowheads and then move them around so uh you know you can say i want it so big and then this one here i want this one to be a bit bigger you know you can do that and you can move the sprockets around if you want again you can grab this inner arrowhead here and then sort of move that around and then you can grab this one here and stretch the chain and as you're doing this you can see here it's it's updating how many number of chain links you're going to get so we're going to get 76 chain links in this configuration and you can change the offset so i placed that on the yz plane but if you want to offset that off the the yz plane you can change that there um you can uh, this this isn't a tutorial for the chain generator by the way either this is the, but you can go and reuse and if you've already got a model sprocket you can use an existing component it essentially just uses a work axis and then asks you to place uh the center line of that path on an existing sprocket so you can do that if you want to right another thing we're going to do oh hang on get off another thing we're going to do is insert chain as right what we're going to do is we're going to keep this as a sketch right we're going to select sketch and my yours might already say solid but but you want to select sketch all right if you're thinking but i want solids but i want solids right well tell you what let's do it let's do it because you might be curious you might be thinking no man i want to see a solid chain link right click ok it's going to pre-create this is just a preview of some files it's going to create so the the design accelerators the chain generators it creates a, an assembly for the chain cluster of parts itself then it gives you a you know a chain part and then it gives you a sprocket parts and stuff so it's just what they're going to call and where they're going to save them and then okay and unfortunately much to your dismay you don't get chain links you, all you get is what looks like a belt which is it's no good for anybody at all but it is what it is that's what it gives you all right, but what we're going to do is we're going to select a sketch, right? So just right click on the chain drive in the browser and it recognizes that as a generator uh, sub assembly. So you can just edit using the design accelerator. And then we're going to change this over to a sketch and then click OK. Right, and that's what it gives you. Save this off, right? So just click OK. Make sure all the files that it's generated are saved. And we're actually not going to use this because, be, because of reasons that I'm not going to go into because it, it would make this even more long winded than it already is. But if if you were to place your chain links in here using this here it 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 bugs out it does it it bugs out and it's it's not it's not all that easy to use and honestly but we're, we're just not going to do that i'm going to assume that you're going to want to build this yourself anyway so um but one thing to make a note of i would keep this saved though just keep this saved so you can reference back to it so you can reference back to what standard you used how many chain links you had um you know what your sprocket sizes are and that sort of thing just it it might help just to keep this saved uh, but we're okay with it for now right so we're going to shut that down and then what we're going to do is we're going to start yet another assembly right but this is going to be this is going to be the final assembly or it could this could be the assembly you've already got that you want to put a chain into so this could be your machine that you've already got um and we're going to click place 
and then we're going to browse to the demo chain and then inside here you're going to find a folder that's called whatever your top level assembly was right so i was working in test right that's where i placed the chain generator in so in that folder it creates a sub a subfolder called test design accelerator and then these are the parts that the chain generator created so there's the two sprockets that's the sketch or the the solid belt that we were looking at and then that's the top level assembly that i put them all in so we're going to select place and then we're going to place all three of these into here all right like that what we're then going to do is select this part here right we want now again this depends on what you're working on right if again if you're working on an assembly where you've already got parts what you would do at this point is constrain this sketch into place where it should be right you want this to go wherever your chain actually needs to go but i don't have any other geometry around here i don't have like a suspension unit or you know like a, a set of bike pedals to put a chain around i don't have that to move this onto so what, instead what i'm going to do is go into the productivity area and then i'm going to place at component origin no, i'm not i'm going to ground and root the components so we're going to select oh, okay it doesn't oh there we go there we are I'd actually pick it in the browser rather than pick it in the model but going to ground and root it. So what it does is it puts that at the assembly origin. Well, it should have done. Ah, because, right, yeah, that's because this wasn't bloody... Brah. Yeah, that, that's because that wasn't around its own. Yeah, right, we'll just, uh, we'll just leave that there. Right, then we're going to move the sprockets up. And what you should see is on your, your roller chain sketch... You've got some axes here, so we can use what we what we need to do is we need to put that on there, and we need to put that on there. That's what we're trying to do here. So we can use that point there and that point there to constrain the center of that to there and the center of that to there. In order to do that, we're going to create a work point on there, and we're going to create another work point on that dot there, and then we're going to constrain. Right, so we're going to go for this sprocket here, which I think is this one here. Is it? No. Okay got them the wrong way around right we're going to pick the center point of that and then we're going to pick that work point there and then click apply and then we're going to go for the first sprocket so that center point there is going to go to there and then apply it's not done yet because these these are now free to spin around like this so what we need to do next is we need to just get it in the right direction so we're going to go back to constrain and then we're going to constrain the it's going to be the it's normally the z-axis but it's probably not modeled like that uh, it's not that one it's not that one yes it is the z-axis so we're going to constrain the z-axis of that sprocket to that axis there there we go and we're going to do the same thing for here the z-axis of that one to that axis there and then apply right and then now these two sprockets should just spin around in place like that way right all good in the hood right next thing we're going to do is we need to we need to model we need to model a surface that represents that path right because this is where the, it's not really smoke and mirror it kind of is actually smoke and mirrors what i did in the first demo you, you, you can't just drop your chain links in and just attach them to a line and watch them go around in a, a circle around the cogs. It just doesn't work like that, obviously. You need to be able to constrain the, the, the chain links to something in the shape of the path that they need to follow around the cogs. So it, it's a thing. It needs to be done. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit the roller chain itself. So that's the, that's the part with the path in it. So let's just minimize these just so the browser's not looking as messy. So double-click the roller chain. And then what we're going to do is extrude that line as a surface, and then we're going to go around the midplane. All right. Uh, in fact, in fact, in fact, in fact, in fact, I think what we're going to do instead, what we're going to do instead, right? We're going to create a new sketch. All right, I'm just thinking out loud here. I've only done this once before, so I'm just kind of preempting a couple of things that I knew were a bit wrong before. Right, we're going to create a new sketch, and then we're going to sketch on the... Uh, we need to find the middle. Oh, of course, all the way. this is the problem with not having your part centralized around the center point and symmetrical. is because your standard work planes are bloody miles off. Right, we're going to use the XY plane. I think that is central. There we go. Right, and then, and then we're going to 
project that uh, all right no we're not we're gonna undo that project that line there and then we're gonna project that line there and then we're gonna project that line there right so we're burning on this sketch the existing sketch why we're we doing that oops I shouldn't have exited that why we're we doing that we're doing that so we can offset this path up and we're gonna offset it by I think it's 2.5 mil I think that's probably fine and this is going to be the line that the chain links follow follow around. And the reason why I'm doing this, the reason why I'm creating a secondary line and offsetting it by 2.5 mil, is if you constrain your chain links to this line here, they're too low down, so they actually start to they, they don't follow the correct path. They follow the correct path around the cogs, but they're too low down. So this is about right, I believe, 2.5 mil. Um, and that is because D1. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll we'll see it working in a bit. We'll see it working in a bit. All right, we're going to finish that sketch, and then we're going to return back up the top level of the assembly, and then we're going to go back into the roller chain sketch, uh, the roller chain part, because I forgot to do something again. <laughs> we're going to extrude. We're going to extrude as a surface this line here both ways by ten mil. It the size doesn't matter. It's this is just so we have an actual physical surface. In fact. It's probably going to be a lot easier to make it a bit bigger. Let's make it 20 mil. Right, and then return. Okay, that is probably about the point where you're going to want to save this. Save it, and then we're going to save this into the demo chain folder, and we're going to call this demo chain. Okay. And then we're going to place... Uh, we're going to come back up and we're going to place demo link and demo link two. So those are the two chain links that we modeled earlier on at the start of the video. We're going to drop those in. I'm going to click OK. Right. And this is where you start to make the magic happen, right? I'm not going to model up the entire chain, right? Because once you've seen the process, once you've seen how to do this, you can then repeat it over and over and over and over again to eventually get the full chain. But this is the process that you want to go through, right? We want our chain link to be central to the sprockets and then we want it to be on the right path so in order to do that we need to put some constraints on so we're going to go to constraint and we're going to pick the so it's demo link one it's that one here so we're going to pick the cent line that one there which is the xy plane of the link and that's going to be constrained to the xy plane of the assembly which is bang on through the middle of the sprockets right and then we're going to click ok now that's moved it all the way down here but we're just going to grab it and move it back so that's now smack bang on the middle right the next thing we're going to do and this is where and this is it this is the key bit this is the step that you need to do to get the chain links to move around the cogs right we're going to select constraint we're going to select a transitional constraint selection one it's going to be this surface here. Selection two is going to be that surface there. And click apply. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to select that one to that one there. And then click apply. Right. For the second chain link, we're going to constrain chain link two, which is that part there. So we're going to expand link two, origin. XY plane, which is the center line, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to constrain it to the center line. You could constrain the center line of this link to the center line of that link. That would do the exact same job. It's probably probably is going to be actually more best practice to do it that way, right? So those two are now on the same center line. And then as a secondary constraint, you want to constrain the center line of the pin through that hole there, and that's it, right? And what we have now is the chain run along the path and you'll find that it'll follow the path around like that so that's what i did in the first video where you saw me do the the demo of pulling the chain around the chain was actually following a switched off surface which was uh sort of floating above the sprockets in order for in order for this chain link to react to this cog what you've got to do is select all the chain links and the cogs and then right click on them and then you want to put them on a contact set. You then go to the inspect tab and then activate the contact solver. And then when you drag, let's just look side on. And when you drag this, 
that's when it'll hit and then move around. And then that's pretty much it. That's how it works. You would then build up the chain. Uh, well, I tell you what, let's turn off. We're done with the path now, so we can turn off this. We can switch the visibility of that part off. Actually, no, we're not. We're not done with that. Let's undo that because we need to constrain the. We need to constrain the other chain links to the surface, so we're not done with that one yet. Uh, right. A couple of tips from here on in. If you are plan if you are following this and you're planning on doing more chain links, right? Do not copy and paste. I don't know if this is a bug or not. But if you want to place another one of these, well, you will, another one of these demo link twos, don't right click and copy and then right click and paste. Because what it'll do, oh, okay, it's making an absolute bullshitter of me. Control C, Control V. Okay, right, all right, forget that. Last time I did that, it actually imported the surface. If we open it up, chain link two. Uh, ah, it's because I've switched it off here. Right, that's fair enough. Yeah, if that surface in the middle was switched on, what it was actually doing was bringing in that surface on a copy and paste. But it's not doing that anymore. All right, fair enough. Furry muff. Furry muff. Right, so we can just leave those chain links in there. We can create a copy and paste of that one there. And then what you do is you just rinse and repeat. You just rinse and repeat. You do the exact same thing. So you'd constrain. Uh, this one here, so this is going to be, you, you do start to lose track, mind, in the browser of which link is which, because you're going to have the 76 chain links in total. That's what it said in the, the, the chain generator. So you're going to lose track of which chain link is which, and that's just the nature of the beast. So if you do want to constrain this one to this one, what you're going to have to do is right click on this one, find it in the browser, and then it's going to highlight which one it is. So you can then expand it and you know that these planes here are the sent lines of that link there. So we're going to constrain XY to XY. See, again, that, that link there is that link there. I thought it was that one there. It's not. So I suppose what you could do to get around that problem is come to this link here and find it in the browser and then find its center line and then switch it on. And then you can constrain. In fact, you just turn them all on. Go to this link here and then turn on its center plane. And then that'll just save you having to go into the browser all the time and click the bloody folders all the time. So now we can just constrain that there to that there. There you go. And then we can move him out there. So now he's on the center line. And then this one needs the transitional constraints on it. So transitional constraint between there and there. Apply. And then a second one between there and there. It does help massively to have a 3D mouse. I'm using a 3D connection space. What's it, the exact name of it is the Space Mouse Pro. Using a 3D connection Space Mouse Pro, it helps hugely to have a 3D mouse when you're doing something like this, when you're constantly spinning around. If, you, if you're if you always on the F4 spinning around, then you're going to constrain, then you're going back to F4. This is so much better. It is such a good little device. Highly recommend getting one. But that's those two transitional constraints put on. Then the final constraint for this one would be to constrain the center line of that to the pin on the last link there. And then click apply and then there you go and what you'll find is this here just works like a charm but that's when you start getting problems now look at the chain links they've all just jumped on top of each other there's absolutely nothing you can do about that unless you can find a different configuration for the constraints that stop them from flipping around that's just a thing that happens. You're just going to have to undo it when it happens because it's very difficult to flip them back over on top of themselves. It's a thing. It's nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do about it. Right, and then that's it. That's how you do it. You would then just put the next link in, constrain that to there, and then apply, and then constrain that to there, and then apply. And you just rinse and repeat, carry on going. Once you've done that, once you've finished doing all the constraints, so in total there's 76 chain links. Once you've constrained them all together, you can then turn off the, the work planes. So we can come into here and turn off the XY plane there and then 
that's demo link two and then demo link one origin turn that off you can then turn off the roller chain because this is just the path that doesn't need to be on you can turn that off that's just a spare spare link and then there's your chain and then this is the point where i was at in the first video in the first section of the video there you go grab him pull him out and then once he hits here that should then turn around right there's a, there is another thing you can do which this is entirely optional right because like i said at the start there is a number of different ways of doing this the a, another way of having the the chain motion is you can create a, a, another constraint you're going to go for a motion constraint and it's going to be called a rotation translation constraint selection one is going to be this face on the sprocket selection two is going to be the demo link and then the x-axis and then for the distance you want to put in about 688 and then what you'll find is when you turn if you hold and grab this cog it will turn actually that's the complete wrong way around isn't it so we need to edit that constraint and then we want to go that way but what you'll find when you do that is the chain can only move along the x-axis because the rotational translation transition whatever it's called constraint is only in this direction so it as you're turning it can't it it can't turn the chain link around because the direction is fixed on the x-axis which is a shame um, but if you did have the entire chain modeled so you had the entire chain model all the way around you could turn the cog and you will see movement on some of the links but you'd only have movement from here to here which is the extent of the direction and the distance that the x-axis is between that part and that part for this part here so that is a rotational tra I forget the bloody name of it, rotation translation constraint and then once you've got that done if you want to be an absolute baller you can then create another constraint between and then call it a motion one between that cog and that cog there and then that would be that one there Like that. Uh, if you are doing this one though if you are going to go down that route instead of the physically drag and have them collide turn off contact sets turn that off just makes things a lot more easier a lot more easier a lot easier all right guys i think that's probably about enough i think i've gone on for far too long but that is a full tutorial for modeling up chain links put them together in an assembly and then a couple of options for real world movement so dragging the chain links till they hit the teeth and just just for clarity just so there's you know this is this is exactly the same as what i had at the very start what we can then do is go into the view tab at the top go for a half section and then select the xy plane of the assembly that'll section through your assembly and then we can go side on and you'll see that Actually, we turned the contact sets off, didn't we? So we want to turn the contact sets back on. Uh, we need to end the section view. All right, select all these. Right click, contact set. All right. And then what we want to do as well. The contact sets don't work with the, the constraints. You'll need to suppress these constraints just for now. Right, then do a half section view again between uh, the XY plane and then up. Okay, and then look side on. All right, and then this should. There you go. Right, you can see we've got a bit. Have we got a bit of clearance at the bottom? So we do have an, a, a tiny bit of clearance at the bottom between the two pins. So that might be good. If if it's not, what you'll find, you can easily change this, is go into the roller chain part. I know I said I was going to end this, but, you know, whatever. Go back into the roller chain part, and then for your surface extrusion, if you edit that sketch, oh, that's not very helpful, change this offset here. The, the larger the offset, it's going to raise the chain link. So you can see... That line there, that's the line that that chain link was constrained to when we did the translation constraints 
or the transition, I forget what they're bloody called, but that pin is constrained to that line. So if you increase this here, it's gonna raise the chain. So you can say, right, we wanna make that 2.7. And then when we finish that sketch, and then return out, you, you, it's, it happens too fast, you can't see it, but it has raised the chain ever so slightly above. You can see there's now a much bigger gap in between the teeth and the pins. So that's an option. All right, right, there is other ways of doing this. Like I said, there's the other documented methods on, on YouTube of, of modeling a chain involves creating a pattern and putting points and linking an assembly pattern of links to a pattern in a part. And you don't you don't get any movement in the assembly if you do it that way. So I, f I found personally that this is the best way of doing it if you want movement, if you want it to be realistic. Use another method if you don't need it to move. This is not, this is definitely, definitely not the most time efficient way of doing a chain placing the links and then constraining them to a path is definitely not the most efficient way of doing this uh, if you don't need the movement uh, just i need to say that because i don't want anyone thinking that i'm saying that this is the most quickest way of doing a chain this is the best way of doing a chain in my opinion if you need the movement and you need it to mimic real life uh interactions between chains and sprockets all right then i think that's enough thank you very much guys if you like the video please press like if you didn't do the other thing press the dislike button and subscribe and comment and stuff share this around if you can that would be great so i can get more subscribers and stuff and then that's all good the more subscribers i've got the more videos i do because it just motivates me etc 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 bye